I'm Justin Cohen. Welcome to Gurus. But one of the biggest barriers to success is thinking that the world owes us, that we are entitled, entitled because we are white or black or young or old or male or female or disadvantaged or privileged. So Piwe Moyo is more than a speaker and author. He was head of learning and development for three JSE-listed companies. He has seen firsthand what it takes to be a corporate superstar. Give up your sense of entitlement. Get over it. So if you can imagine this with me, it's in the mid-90s and I'm growing up in some dodgy place in the south of Johannesburg called Orange Farm. And it was a very interesting time for me because it really looked like I live in three different worlds. The first world in which I lived in is Orange Farm, my home, my hood. It's an informal settlement, so we're all poor, but we don't even know we're poor. Uh, because if you're poor and your front opposite is poor and your back opposite is poor, poor looks normal. Uh, in, in fact, the first time I knew I was poor was when I went to study at the Vale University of Technology in Van der Bale Park. That's the one that's burning right now. So I went to study at, at VUT uh, for my first degree. And I say first because after that they just kept on coming. Yeah, what a humble guy. So when I get there, there was this guy called Pete. So Pete says to me, oh, you know what, Spiwe? For your background, you've done very, very well. And I'm thinking, what background is this guy talking about? Because for me, it was normal. So VUT became my second world for a while. My third world was a company called Mr. Price Loading Store. So I was working part-time at Mr. Price Loading Store. And the Mr. Price where I was working is located in Southgate, also in the south of Johannesburg. And for those who don't know Southgate, Southgate is surrounded by some middle-class suburbs like Mondio and Meadale. Uh, and, and I say middle-class uh, now, but at that time I used to think it was an area for rich people. You know, I, I used to say, yo, yo, these rich people. But now I know Shem. They are just middle-class, you know. And... <laughs> And, and how I know that is that I'm also part of that middle class now. I've made it in life, thank you very much. But I have made it. I, I really, really have. And, and how I know I've made it is that about six months ago, I had a break-in in my house. After that, I knew I've made it, you know? Because in South Africa, until you have a break-in, you are still up and coming. So it was very, very interesting for me to live in these three different worlds. I learned so much about human behavior, and I became so fascinated with human beings and human behavior. I then went to become an organizational behavior specialist. So I've been studying human beings, particularly on how human beings behave in an organization. So I teach organizations behavior as well in some business schools in South Africa. And there's a few things I learned about human beings, about what, what makes people succeed in life. And one of the things that I want to share with you today is this. Many people who succeed in life understand this fact. Things don't just happen. You're never going to achieve anything by osmosis. And many people tell me, you know what, Spiwe, if it was meant to happen, it will happen. No, it will not happen. You must make it happen. And, and the reason I understood this, I remember very it was the 4th of July, 2002, and I was standing at a train station in Orange Farm called Stratford Station. It was half past four in the morning. It was dark and it was cold. And I was standing there waiting for the train that I used to take to work. First train from Orange Farm to Bramfontein, train number 9003. And I remember this particular day on the 4th of July, 2002, standing there with a friend of mine waiting for a train. And this friend of mine says to me, you know what's pure? This thing of waking up so early in the morning, waking up at three o'clock to catch a 4.30 train must stop. We must work hard and get out of this informal settlement. Surely there's a better life out there. Surely we can also buy ourselves cars and houses like other people. So when he says that, I look at him and we connect like they do in the days of our lives. And I say, Amanda, comrade. We must work hard and get out of this place. That was the 4th of July, 2002. I go back to Orange Farm in 2015, and I found that my friend is still traveling in that same train, half past four in the morning, 9003. It's 13 years later. And I ask him, my friend, what happened to our dreams? We are supposed to work hard and get out of this informal settlement. And my friend gives me this philosophical answer and says to me, you know what, Piwe? It's the system. The system has marginalized us and ostracized us. And if you look at the context of this matter, and when it was said that my heart sank, and I couldn't laugh at my friend, but what my friend missed is that there were many other people who've grown up in Orange Farm in the same background who've gone to do amazing things for their lives. Some of our friends are, are doctors, business people. Some of them are amazing speakers speaking to you today. It's just uh, one of those things people have done. What is it that differentiates him from 
other people who have gone to do amazing things is that we understand that things don't just happen. Lives are not changed by intentions. They are changed by actions. Thank you. Sapira Moya, welcome to Guru. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Oh, what a profound message, Thanks. right? The yeah. world doesn't owe you. The world doesn't owe you anything. Uh, the world doesn't owe you a bursary. No. Your employer doesn't owe you a bursary. Nobody owes you a promotion. If we are going to progress in life, everybody must understand that it's in your hands. Your keys to success, yes. number one. Number one, things don't just happen, which is what I've just said. People must understand that if you're going to get anything in this life, you must make it happen. <laughs> you know, there's an old saying, there's some people who make it happen, there's some people who let it happen, and there's some people who wonder, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We've got to take charge. We've got to make it happen, not wait for other people to make it happen for us. No, no one is coming to your rescue. No one is coming to rescue you in life. You must take that initiative and make something happen. Number two. Number two for me is many people must understand that life is difficult. Get over it. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, I learned this from Dr. M. Scott Peck, which I know you know. The road less traveled. Yes. And it's the opening line of the book, isn't Absolutely. it? The opening line, life is difficult. Life is difficult. And like, because so much of the self-help movement is, it, you know, the secret, it's quick, it's easy, do a visualization, you can have it all, yeah. just believe and conceive and you can achieve. No, actually... It's pretty tough. This thing is tough. Life is hard. Uh, uh, people complain about the fact that their boss is difficult, the economy is difficult, I've grown up in a difficult place, but who said it must be easy? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's where you see people competing with their sob stories. No, I was poor. No, I was poor. <laughs> no, you aren't. But, uh, it, and it doesn't help anybody because after that entire thing, someone still needs to make a decision to change their lives. If anybody can talk about the challenge, it's you. Because you did come from Orange Farms. Yes. You knew what it was like. Growing up in an informal settlement is hard, it's tough, and nobody's saying it's not, and, and so on. And some people think uh, maybe you're taking lightly what people are going through. No, it is tough. It is difficult. And the idea is that we can change our lives. We can change our destinies. Mm -hmm. and, but it's going to need somebody to just stand up and say, geez, no one is going to do this thing mm -hmm. for me. I must stand up and push and make it happen. What do you say to someone who's looking at us right now and say, well, you know what? Justin grew up during apartheid South Africa. Yes. He did have a lot of advantages yes. that Sapiwe didn't have. Sure. And therefore, actually, Sapiwe is entitled yes. to something more right now. Yeah, so, so I mean... Uh, the, there's a whole history in our country, uh, privilege and so on. And you, you are not, I'm not going to say that there isn't, right? And, and we must do whatever we need to do to be able to correct the wrongs of the past. But what we cannot do at this stage is to say, uh, just because you were not privileged at that time, you must wait for somebody else to rescue mm -hmm. you. So there are people who've grown up in apartheid South Africa, for example, who were white, who don't have anything. There are people who've grown up in, in apartheid South Africa who are black, who, do, who did have something at that time. So you kind of understand that it's going to take a bit more than that. Mm -hmm. It's going to take for someone to be able to take responsibility for their lives, and we must have processes, we must talk mm -hmm. about it, but we also need a certain type of mindset to take our country forward. And it really cuts both sides. I mean, one of the things that frustrates me, and I hear it again and again, I can't get a job because I'm a white male. Yes. Never mind that over 70% of management in our country is still pearly yes. white. And actually, if you look at white unemployment, and I know that there are a lot of white people struggling, sure. absolutely, but the only thing stopping you from getting what you want yeah. is your BS story about why you can't get it. Absolutely. Right? And if that story is about something you can't change, like your gender, color of your skin, or your age, yeah. that you know is a BS story because there are many people with the same skin color, gender, age, yes. who are doing it. Who are doing it. So, I mean, in life, you, you can either choose to have good explanations uh, of why you, you can't. And all of us can have explanations. I mean, I, I can have damn good reasons why I cannot achieve. Uh, and somebody else can have their own reasons as well. But the issue is, after you've explained, after you've rationalized, after you've quoted statistics, uh, <laughs> the, the fact is that your life has not changed. You, you can have reasons or you can have results. Absolutely. Number three. I think number three for me is that people must understand that you 
cannot despise small beginnings. It, it's very important to dream big, and we're encouraged to do that, but do not despise small beginnings. So if you're working somewhere and, and you're doing a job that doesn't feel like uh, it's, it's a good job or glamorous or whatever, do not despise it. And, and, and for me, that was something that I learned uh, in 2002 when I was traveling on that train that I was talking about. I was an intern at a company called Mining Qualifications Authority, and they'd taken five of us as interns. All of us had HR degrees, but because they used to organize organize a lot of conferences because that's what the core business was. They used to ask us as interns to help us, uh, help out a lot, come bring boxes, bring this, bring that. And four of my colleagues used to refuse. They felt that because they have degrees, they cannot be doing uh, such a work. They used to laugh at me and say, I don't know HR, I don't know labor laws, why am I doing this? But fast forward 10 years later, I'm the chairman of the HR profession in this country. But I was not despising. When I was working, carrying boxes, I was being transformed, I was being challenged, listening to other speakers that are way ahead of me, that I was not even supposed to be there. I'm too junior to be in that conference, but I was learning. So do, do not despise small beginnings if you want to succeed. Don't despise small beginnings. Despise small next beginnings. key to success. I think the next key to success that I've learned in my life is that people who are too nice to you will limit your progress. Uh, people who are too nice, people who understand when you're submitting sloppy work or like uh, people, those kind of people will limit your progress. In your life, you need somebody who's going to say, dude, what you've just done now is nonsense. Uh, you cannot do this. You cannot give me that kind of a report. Those are the people who challenge you. Uh, and I found out, uh, Justin, that those are the people who love you the most. Your next key to success? My next key to success is, I think many of us must understand that if you're going to succeed in life, you have to pay the price for success. You cannot afford, and many people look at the output, they look at what you're driving, they look at what you have, and they say, geez, Spew is lucky, Justin is lucky, and, but they are not interested in the type of things you do every day, mm -hmm. uh, the amount of hours you put in, the amount of things you have to actually do to get what you, you have. They're not interested. They just want uh, what you have. It takes 10 years to create an overnight success. It does. And, and many people don't see that, right? Many people only see... It's like when somebody says, geez, where did it come from? The issue is you've been around. You've been working hard, perfecting your art. Now you can afford to do the things that you're doing. For me, your message is really crystallized in that incredible research, one of the keys to success is whether you have an internal or external locus of control. Yes. External, you're always looking for someone to blame, right? Sure. The government, the economy, your boss, your partner. Internal is, yes, I acknowledge there are these circumstances, but I'm going to focus on what I can control. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, you must take accountability and say, geez, I need to look in that mirror and say, if I don't like this thing, I must be the one who's changing it. I must be the one who's paying the price. I must be the one who's raising my hand. If you want a promotion, it does not help you to cry about sexism, racism, and all the isms. Uh, it doesn't help you. You need to look in that mirror and say, maybe, just maybe, I'm not, uh, I'm not performing to the level I'm supposed so, to perform. So, Piwe Moyo, thank you. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm.